Hey YouTube, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. As promised, I finally am able to get around to my artwork, or lack thereof, I should say, my sketching and the adventures that I have with it. Um, this has been a very, uh, I would say, unproductive year for me from a sketching perspective just because of the amount of uh, issues that I've had with my hands. Um, now that uh, hopefully that's all been resolved and it's behind me in the mirror, I can start to pick up and increase my speed in which I sketch, time permitting, because that's another big issue for me. But I wanted to kind of show you through some of the sketchbooks that I've had because I had requests for some of the viewers to see some of the art or some of the sketches that I've done. Um, and it's kind of timely. It's Inktober. October uh, is the month for Inktober and it made me go back and look at some of my Inktober sketchbooks that I've had. So I'll share some of the sketches that I've done in the past. Um, I am not participating in Inktober this year. I'm too busy <laughs> and, and I'm not going to try to commit to sketching every day um, and I'm still recovering from my hand surgery. So those two things are probably the two biggest factors for me not sketching. I will be trying to sketch though however um, this month but probably just not with that kind of daily uh, frequency so let's get into it and then I'll show you what I did with my um, art toolkits that I told you I was waiting for the gouache that has come in and I've got my palettes reset up I've reswatched my card so I know which ink or watercolors and gouaches are which ones I'm on the palettes and I'll share with you that so without further ado let's dive in so I've got this big stack. I just kind of went through and flagged some of my better sketches. Uh, sketchbooks are sometimes just a work in progress for people who are, are, I would say, artistically inclined. I wouldn't say I was a true artist of any sort, but I do like to sketch. And so be gentle in the comments. I know I'm not perfect and I'm not trying to be a Picasso. Uh, Picasso. So um inktober like i said came up uh this was one that i did back in 2019 i was very fascinated by birds it still am it's one of my favorite animals to draw so i tend to do bird drawings quite a bit and these were two from that one in inktober and i've got other sketches this size is a stillman and burn i think it's a three by five inch book if i'm not if I'm correct. Um, I tend to take this with me a lot because it's pocketable. It fits into almost every bag size that I carry. Um, when I was commuting on the regular into work um, pre-COVID, I always had some kind of sketchbook on me and I do try to keep some kind of sketchbook on me and some kind of drawing instrument or instruments with me um, when I am out and about just because I never know when the mood's going to strike me and I'm sitting in a restaurant or a coffee shop etc that I have some time to kill and I see something that I want to um, sketch and I usually do do a pretty good job of taking photos of things that I want to sketch um, this was from a scene outside of a local coffee shop last year in the autumn or fall foliage actually this was from 2018 so this one's quite old but I tend to try to take in uh, the scenery around me and get stuff in. This was a drawing that I got from Pinterest. That's another place of in um, interest that I tend to do. Like I'll take something from Pinterest and try to recapture it and do it myself. Um, so that's one of the things that I've done. Let's just look at a couple of these. Again, the bird theme runs strong. Um, this was from the first day of Inktober back in, I think, 2021. So this is a couple of years old. Um, that's one of the sketches that I did. And I tend to play along the lines of, uh, sometimes I get free form and I try to draw without inside my head, like this bottom one. Sometimes I, again, the tufted teat mouse is one of my favorite um, birds to draw. They're just so darn adorable. Um, and then I try to do some loose sketching here and I did this one actually in 2023 um, and I'm playing around and messing around with my technique usually with gouache and I've got some that I've tried to do with um, mixed media so I will also sometimes do like this where I'm working on very loose forms of drawing people which is my weakness um, 
I'll admit it readily. Um, but these are kind of quick people sketches and learning how to do people on the fly when you're urban sketching. And I see then that's one of those. Uh, another one of my little quick books, and I also take these books with me on travel. So again, the Tufted Teat Mouse in a different color, and more birds, and then freeform kind of just playing. Now this is like colored pencils and mixed media, so sometimes I kind of mix it up. Here's a sketch that I did this year. I also draw a lot of um, inspiration from Pinterest and sometimes I look, look at photos and just try to recapture them and recreate them so I did this girl off of a Pinterest photo as well and I am not a hot or cold press person but if you can see here the texture of this paper it is definitely cold press paper and this one is just the visual sketchbook uh, from uh, Strathmore. Uh, sometimes have sketchbooks that have nothing but swatch colors in them and plants as well. Um, these are a couple of the older ones, but this is a square notebook and I forgot who makes this one, but it's one of my favorite ones that I can get sometimes at my local art store. Um, this one is Holbein gouache. I was playing around with my Holbein gouache colors. Again, flowers and plants t tend to be a very popular thing for me, but I also will do a lot of swatching with my new um, art supplies, so I get a lot of this kind of thing going on in my sketchbooks, where I kind of keep track of different arts, different art materials that I'm using. These are Sennelier watercolors, and over here I've got some Winsor & Newton swatched out. Midori. Um, this is an A5 Midori notebook. It is a framed version of it. I've been playing around with this just to see how well that this will handle uh, mixed media and ink. And I did this one again. This was I used this as my inspiration. This is the actual sticker, and I try to recapture it here. Again, another bird. You're going to see this theme kind of commonly. Working on people skills, this was a photo off of Pinterest and me just trying to work with trying to recapture this little young boy. Then I have this. I was following along somebody out of YouTube and um, I recaptured, it was a paint along, so I did the paint along with that person. Again, I like to kind of just do things as the mood hits and I'm inspired to. Here's one of my travel journals that I take with me. And in this one I've got, this is from the last trip that I just took to South America and the Andy Mountains and the scenery that we had um, down in Armenia, South America. And this was actually what the pool looked like inside the house that we stayed at um, that was inside. And then the view from my bedroom window that I was staying at, and this was, you know, looking at the uh, Pacific Ocean from a different perspective. Um, and I tend to travel journal with this kind of sketchbook that's in landscape, but this is a Hannah Mueller, excuse me. I tend to use these a lot when I'm uh, traveling as well. If I don't use Stillman and Vern, Hannah Mueller sketchbooks are the next thing that I tend to reach for. Okay, and I just have one more out of this one that I wanted to share with you. Um, so this is more earlier in my journey. I was a big Pokemon player for a long time. I've kind of hung up Pokemon for a little bit, um, but this was inspired for me to do that. This was my Sneasel. He was my um, creature that I had, and then this was a ink vent book that came out from 2020. I did not like the paper in this book at all. I thought the size of this book was fantastic for doing ink vent drawings, but I found that the quality of the paper was just not there. And it was a collab with Vivia Colors. I hope that they've done a better job with their paper, but it kind of peeled and lifted off a lot when I was um, utilizing it for that ink vent. So that ink vent was kind of a bust for me. And then this is just a regular sketchbook. Um, I tend to take this one with me when I was going and doing sketching uh, studies here locally in the Metropolitan DMV. I've got a couple of things here 
that we were kind of like doing and they're old and they're pencil drawings so they're not as vibrant um, and what I will tend to do a lot of times is just kind of work on this is working with charcoal as well um, getting that kind of stuff going on and then lastly uh, this one was done in pastel and I don't work with pastel a lot I find it really really messy and I just got them pulling mine out but I need to get a couple of material pieces for me to do some smudging because I actually do like that kind of technique of pastel artwork so that is a little bit of a tour of the things that I'm interested in from a art perspective um, and what I've done and what I've created in some of my books. Let me give you an update on my palettes. I have three kind of travel size palettes that I've been using a lot. I have more actually um, in play, but um, these are the ones that I've been reaching for pretty much the last year or so and the other ones are more stay-at-home palettes that are larger that I pull out and use them as I'm working from my dining room table okay so this one is the art tool kit oh, let me do this one first this one is the one that I always take with me I'm usually when I'm traveling this one will fit no matter what into the kit that I use when I'm um, getting ready to to get on a plane and go somewhere and I've showed this kit and it still fits in the back of this kit but additionally to this kit which I will just flash just in case anybody is new to the channel it is a lit lab kit and it is chucked full with just a little bit of everything I've got washi tape for borders a small pair of travel scissors I've got needable erasers I've got this nice new tiny spritzer bottle that I keep empty I'm getting ready to travel again so I got to keep that empty I have some water brushes here um, that I'm gonna have to probably think about emptying if I remember and I have two clutch pins these are new to the kit so I've got a 2h and a 2b um, that I'm really looking forward to working with and I'm trying to get the fine still. I've got a mono eraser. I've got two of these actually. One is round and this one is oblong. So if you're wondering why I have two, they're different sizes. And this is another art tool kit which is now kind of replacing this one. Um, this one has my watercolors already preset. So these colors already came with um, this particular kit and I took this kit with me to South America um, but I have now these two bigger portfolio or folio style um, art kits as well um, so this one right now is living in the back of that and then over here I keep a small ruler I have a jelly roll pen this is really good for um, indicating highlights and this is a 0.5 I also have a 0.3 but sometimes it doesn't show up this is a fountain pen and um, this has carbon fiber black ink in it this is a platinum procyon pen with a 0.38 nib I'm keeping this one constantly in this so that I always have a permanent black ink so that I can sketch with I also have a Curataga pencil if I don't want to use the clutch, I've got a Fudasake brush pen, and I also have three fine liners for different widths of lines, and they're all Copics. So, um, oops, excuse me. So I have the 0.3, the 0.5. And the point one. I will probably take one of these out because I think that um, I don't need these three pens when I travel but they were they've been sitting in my kit forever so I'm just kind of used to having them. I have painters tape to do my borders with my travel sketches different sizes and different widths and then I've got some washi tape that I use sometimes for my journal entries so I have those on the fly and I think I have another bigger bulk of more wash uh, painter state which I will probably consolidate um, for the next trip so these are the things that I tend to 
keep into my um, travel kit with me on the go um, and I usually when I'm even going about town I will always carry these um, these pins as they currently are configured into the kit so that's all of these things let me just get this back in there and I've got the pencils which are new which I'm really excited about um, that's just for charcoal only I've got some art graph charcoal that I can use for highlights as well so that's all that and then I squeeze this little eraser if I want a different type of eraser um, into this kit so that's all living inside of this kit folds nicely packs nicely very concise heavy but very um, compact art kit for on the go all right the new the new kits the new kits are looking like such so this one I got the band from let me just bring the phone down and the camera um, and I've got some gouache on here but the bands I got from um, art tool kit as well and that one is actually too big here is the gouache palette I just got done figuring out the gouaches for that and it looks like the following oops 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 hold on just a second I forgot I flipped this upside down. So the one thing about the paint in these um, kind of palettes is they are subject to getting dry and falling out. So you have to just be aware of it and move on, move on. <laughs> um, but this is all gouache uh, for this particular palette. So I'm really looking forward to doing that because gouache dries very quickly. If you're doing anything plain air or outside, just really good to kind of take and go with you and if you want more detail about what the paints are etc let me know in the link below and then I'll do a further explanation of those in a different video and then this is the watercolor kit and in this kit I have these little cups again this all came from art tool kit um, this one has all my watercolors and I've got my palettes taped down with just washi tape um, and these are the inks that I have in this one, or I should say the watercolors I have in this one. And, oh no. Okay, so I did pick <laughs> some of my, some of, like I said, they do move. So sometimes you have to be really careful about um, them shifting around. But this is the watercolor kit. I love these big palette folios because you can hold a 21 different kinds of colors in them. Um, they're a little bit more, uh, there's a little bit more mixing space up in here with the entire um, kit itself so you have lots of mixing space I'm gonna have to wipe off the little um, hooker screen that I have there but these, these are, are the, the two palettes that I have and like I said gouache is on the left and watercolor is on the right um, if you have any questions let me know if you have any further suggestions for further more content let me know as well I would love to get your feedback on it I hope you found this um, video to be interesting if you did please give it a thumbs up if you stayed to the end thank you so much for staying to the end and until next time stay safe talk to you later bye